Well, there was plenty, plenty of big names there in the political jungle. You could probably recognise them. Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, Jeremy Corbyn, Theresa May and Tony Blair. I'm joined by all of them now. Sort of. <laughs> I'm joined by Andy Cronk, Guy Rose, Graham Dougal, Anne Gray and John Brolly, who all work as political lookalikes. And I, I, be able to see you all on Zoom. I feel like I'm chairing the G20 or something here. Um, uh, where should we, where to start? Where to start? Let, so let's start with, uh, we'll work through the, the order we heard from them. Boris Johnson, a.k.a. Andy Cronk. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you, uh, 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 the nation that's listening this morning. Uh, now, that's, that's usually how I might introduce myself. And it's good to see you. It's good to see you. You've got the uh, you've got the Union Jack behind you, which is very important if you're the Absolutely. Prime Minister. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for people, for, let me explain to people um, who can't obviously see you if they're listening on the radio. You've got a suit on, blue shirt and a blonde wig. But beyond that, um, your your similarities to Boris Johnson are not immediately obvious. No, no. Um, I'm more I'm more uh, an impersonator than a lookalike. So uh, I do stand up and I do um, uh, impersonations, and it's it's more it's more about the voice and and the gestures and you know get, getting out there and, and having some fun with the character. Okay, so and where do you go and do this? Um, I've I've been invited to um, anything from uh, Tory member um, uh, parties. I've been invited to birthday parties. I've been invited to uh, a A-list Christmas party where I had to give up my phone, sign an NDA, and I can talk about it very little. Um, oh, I was, well, in that case, what can you tell us? <laughs> um, well, I, I, I could say that I walked into the room and the first person I saw was a former prime minister. Um, and were I, they pleased to see you in the guise of Boris Johnson? No, absolutely not. He 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 blanked me um, by saying he. We know it's not true, Zemay. Um, he blanked me and, and wouldn't engage in the in the comedy that I brought before him, uh, and and was uh, was was actually quite rude. But um, I then. Oh, I Dave, then Dave, Dave, that doesn't sound like David Cameron at all. I, I'm not saying another word. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I was then uh, later on. I was dragged onto the dance floor by a former Doctor Who. Um, I I got very uh, starstruck by seeing uh, a female Avenger that I fancied for years, and then realised that I was dressed as Boris Johnson and babbled on about liking her in skin tight lycra. Um, you know, so it, it it was it was quite uh, an, an evening and a uh, very mixed bag. Uh, and what's 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 been the weirdest thing that you've been asked to do as Boris Johnson? Um, I was I was asked to go up to Blackpool and, and go to a, a party just after the election um, where Boris had got in, and um, I was brought in and um, I was invited to go there from between ten and midnight. And by the time I got there, everyone was completely drunk. I walked into the room, I got a standing ovation from everybody, and the majority of people spoke to me all night as if I was Boris Johnson, asking me about policy and saying how proud they were that I'd got in. And it was a very surreal night. And then ended up on, an, they had a bucking bronco in the garden. It was snowing and they wouldn't let me off the bucking bronco until I'd done about four repetitions of it. So there was as Boris riding his bucking bronco. I mean, I mean, it just proves Boris can ride through anything, you know, as, as he's, proved right. he's proving right now. He can ride through a bucking bronco. He can ride through Partygate, you know. Uh, yes, um, yes. Uh, well, that sounds that sounds very good. Well, we'll come we'll come back to you on your um, your uh, uh, your history of of being uh, Boris Johnson. Okay, let's come let's come back to British politics now. Um, let's uh, we've done current Prime Minister uh, Boris Johnson. Let's do uh, his immediate predecessor Theresa May, Anne Gray. Theresa good May morning. look alike. Yes. Good morning to you. Nice to see you've got the grey hair, you've got the pearls on, and the jacket. Um, when did you start work as a Theresa May lookalike? How did that come about? It came about shortly after she'd become Prime Minister and there was a short piece in the in the Sunday Times stating that the agency had eight David Camerons on their books but no Theresa Mays. So I was persuaded by my husband and daughter to send in a photo and that, that was it. So I've worked while she was Prime Minister. 
Um, and what what uh, what do you think goes through the mind of someone who says, "I tell you what, this party could really do with that that party animal uh, that is Theresa May." <laughs> well, I haven't done parties. Um, obviously, I'm not a party person. You know, things would be different in politics if I was still prime minister. You know, there would have been no Downing Street parties at all. Um, but I've I did, I've done um, a conference, a, a, a large training event for um, a conference, along with um, Trump and Corbyn lookalikes, which worked pretty well. And I've done a fair amount of television, um, which was quite a lot of fun. What have you done? Talk me through some of the, the strangest things that you've been hired as a Theresa May lookalike for. I, I think when there was a, um, a television sketch where they wanted Theresa to have fun. Obviously, she had a really tough time. So I had to walk out of number 10 um, looking really miserable and then leap in, or fall into a, a ball pit, which was actually a great deal of fun. I was able to shimmy to, you know, the Dancing Queen, you know, <laughs> channeling my inner Theresa May, channeling her inner Meryl Streep. Um, and then get myself into a ball pit somehow, which I'd never done before. I mean, I'm sort of an elderly lady. Um, and in 50s childhoods, we didn't have ball pits to play in. But it was such fun. I just sort of leapt in backwards and it was great. I don't know how I managed to do it. But um, that was a huge amount of fun. I'd recommend it. And has there been any, um, since she's stopped being Prime Minister, has there been any call uh, for you uh, since? I mean, actually, she just keep popping up herself. Uh, these days, sticking the uh, the kitten heels to in, in the back of Boris Johnson's head in the House of Commons, does does your your bookability rise and fall depending on uh, her own profile? Um, there has been nothing um, since she stopped being Prime Minister <laughs> until oh. today. Until today, well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that that uh, that um, phone call suggestion from your 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 family um is still paying off uh net uh still paying off these days i'll tell you what i will cover we will continue this conversation in just a moment we've still got to speak to uh tony blair and jeremy corbyn and then uh yeah we'll, we'll find out more about this strange world of uh political lookalikes here on times radio a very good morning to you it's matt Shirley on times radio we are talking to boris johnson donald trump jeremy corbyn theresa may and tony blair Sort of. We've got their political lookalikes uh, joining us on the show. We've heard, we've spoken to Andy Cronk, who's a Boris Johnson lookalike. Guy Rose is a Donald Trump. Uh, Anne Gray does Theresa May. Well, let's stick with the Theresa May era then. And I mean, I, I don't want to turn this into a competitive thing, but the, uh, certainly on the Zoom call, the most convincing lookalike is uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Graham Dougal, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, uh, well, well I, we Anne and I have actually performed together. We've uh, shared a hot tub on uh, live television twice. Uh, Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. So you, so you is Jeremy Corbyn and Anne is Theresa May. What was yeah. that on, Anne? That was, that, last... that was on on the last leg. Yes. <laughs> wow. So, um, uh, Graham. Talk me through how you became a Jeremy Corbyn lookalike. Well, I, I got a bunch of friends, about four or five of them, who went to the same school as Corbyn uh, in Shropshire. And uh, when he was up for the leadership, they were comparing notes on Facebook about uh, his suitability. So I sort of looked up this guy and I thought there's something familiar about him. And there was one photograph in particular of him making a speech. I, I, that, that's me. So, uh, I mean, about the same time as people were starting to ask uh, if I should join an agency, I, I, I did. And so did you always have the, because you've got the white hair, did you always have the beard? The, uh, yes, I always had the beard. Um, the, the only thing I've done to maintain any looks is just get my hair cut more often. Um, otherwise, and, nothing at all. And so apart from getting into a hot tub with Theresa May, what's the weirdest thing that you've been asked to do as a Jeremy Corbyn lookalike? Uh, well, <laughs> well the, the, I mean, the last leg, leg always would seem to be coming up with different stunts for me. So there was a famous wrecking ball incident. And after that, they, uh, they, they, they asked the audience to come up with the next stunt for me to do. And uh, the most popular one, the one they wanted me to do, was to go to Wimbledon on Henman Hill and see if they could get a, uh, an old Jeremy Corbyn uh, 
chance going. But I pointed out to them for the first time I'd come up on the, the ballot and had centre court tickets for the court, men's quarterfinals. <coughs> and uh, I pointed out on the conditions for the ticket that um, you aren't, can't film at the place if you, unless you've got permission. And uh, if you misbehave, you can be chucked out and uh, possibly uh, not allowed back in again. Uh, so it went to their lawyers, they checked it out, but in the end they, they, they relented. <laughs> so instead I, um, I did the run through the wheat field in uh, Union Jack Boxer shorts instead. <laughs> wow. Now just, um, uh, Graham, you, you skipped over very slightly there, the wrecking ball inc incident. Explain what that was. You as Jeremy Corbyn on the last leg, what were you doing? Uh, yes, well, this was uh, one about uh, Theresa May facing all these different uh, obstacles heading towards Brexit. And uh, for this occasion, they brought in a juggler to play Theresa May. And uh, so she starts off with one ball, then two, depending on uh, with all the different problems coming up. And then uh, finally, there's uh, and then there's Jeremy Corbyn and I come swinging in. Uh, in, again in boxer shorts, uh, in <laughs> EU boxer shorts, uh, on a wrecking ball and knock her over, uh, like um, and, uh, Miley Cyrus, yeah, swinging so, in like Miley Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. wow, uh, I feel like each time I've spoken to one of you, that the um, the the stakes have been have been raised even even higher. We um, uh, right, I tell you what, let's 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 bring in Tony Blair then, John <laughs> Bully, Tony Blair lookalike. Good morning, good morning. How did you start uh, at work as a Tony Blair look like? I was a performer anyway. I was I was doing a children's show, and um, uh, while I was doing this children's show, there was a big look-alike event on the same gig, and I just got recruited. So it was very good. I was very lucky. It, it, it was almost the day Tony Blair got elected leader of the Labour Party. So a bit of an old hand. It was that long ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So what? Um... What did you? What did you get asked? I mean, I, I, without being too too, I feel like I'm being very rude in passing. Come on, without being too rude, John, you look less like him now than perhaps you might have done in the past. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I'm pretty much retired now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have done quite a lot of weird things as Tony. Go on then. Tell me, tell me the weirdest thing you've been asked to do as Tony Blair. Probably the weirdest thing was I was the Christmas window display in Selfridges in Oxford Street with um, a David Beckham lookalike. They had the They'd set the window up like a, a sauna and the two of us came in, in our bath towels wearing speedos underneath and had a bit of a, a game of football. But the weird <laughs> thing was, it was so disruptive to the street, they actually blocked the traffic and the police came and shut us down. <laughs> wow. There seems to be an awful lot of nakedness or near nakedness involved yeah. in, the, in the life of being a lookalike. I've done plenty of the bouncing up and down on, on a bed with... A, with uh, why fronts with a, a rose on and things, sing celebratory songs. I've also done going to bed with American presidents as well. I, they, they did the Morecambe and Wise bit with me and George Bush. George and I had a lot of romantic affairs as a, a lookalike. <laughs> I'm really interested, have any of you um, uh, met the person that you're a lookalike of? Um, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, Graeme Dougal, you have. Yes, yeah, it was the first time he was on uh, the last leg and uh, he was arriving in a tuxedo uh, Bentley and in the, the, the opening sequence and uh, I was doubling for him. Uh, so you had to shoot it all beforehand and just do the face stuff with him when he arrived. And uh, while they were shooting that in the basement, I was still waiting upstairs and, uh, and an assistant came up and said, well, we'd, uh, like, he'd like to meet you. <laughs> Uh, and I got a lovely photograph with him in the green room afterwards where we were happening to wear almost exactly the same clothes. And I always <laughs> say, uh, I'm the one to the left of Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> Very good. Anyone else met their, their doppelgangers? Well, I nearly did. Um, uh, Andy, the, so this, the, is, this is you and Boris Johnson. Yeah, the, the A-list party that I mentioned earlier. Um, he apparently was there before I was there, and when he heard that uh, a lookalike was coming, he made a swift exit. So ah. I think it was more of a tag team job that day. Not, not the first time that he's scarpered from a party. Uh, you, you've never met Theresa May then, Anne? No, I haven't, no. And, and just what about... Um, I, I wonder how you feel about the person that you're sending... I mean, in the fact that you look like someone has no, no connection to your politics, do you like the person that you're... Um, uh, you're pretending to be. Guy, first of all, I mean, 
Are, are you? Uh, do you like Donald Trump? Well, like anybody else, you know, we know know of his his failings and his, and his unfortunate statement and all this in the past. But I think we have to recognise that he did have a lot of very good part. And foreign policy, for instance, he was much more severe than Sleepy Joe is today. You know, he he was dealing with Putin and Xinjiang and all all the rest of them in a much more effective sort of way. But uh, I never I never met him, but. I was always hoping that if anything unfortunate ever happened to him, if an assassin got in, that uh, I might get a call from the White House. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you could just take over. You could just take over. Um, uh, what about you, uh, Anne? Anne? Did, did you have any trouble pretending to be Theresa May? I have a certain amount of empathy for her. Yeah. Um, I think she's she was very head girlish and I'm quite a similar sort of person, to be honest. Um, I'm a retired teacher and this is my real hair by the way um we've always had throughout when i've seen photos of her as a student her hair was our hair was similar then and it's been similar throughout the years which is it's that's not coincidence i suppose um, you're similar ages fashions and all that sort of thing i'm a little bit older than she is yeah um but yes i mean i and i don't have her clothes budget sadly so <laughs> Yes, she so, might do. So, so much turmoil at the moment. I think we need a grown up in the house, and she's the one. I, I can't. I'm, I'm surprised, frankly, that the uh, last leg haven't been on and got had you sort of wrestling with uh, with a with a Boris Johnson lookalike. What about you, um, uh, John? Is the Tony Blair lookalike? I mean, clearly Tony Blair has been up and down in popularity. Is that what your your does that affect your own politics? Yes, well, to be honest, like a lot of people, we all had massive hopes for Tony when he first got in. So I was on the wave of all of that as well. But it was the it's the whole war business. I mean, you're not going to like somebody who get puts you out of work for um, three years because <laughs> no one would no one would book me while it was the toxic Iraq war. But you have to. I've I've done a lot of quite complex performances as him, playing him in plays and things like that, and I've studied him. What you can't deny, he was an absolute genius. He could play the crowd, he could play any audience. And anyone I've met who knew him says, I only had to speak to him for a minute or two, and it was like I was the only person. And he really cared about what I wanted to say. And then, of course, he was gone on to the next person. So admiration, probably, more than anything. Terrific, terrific stuff. I'll tell you what, before you all go, I'm going to get you all to just introduce yourselves as your characters again, just because it's... It's amusing me, if nothing else. Uh, so let's, uh, I'll, I'll say goodbye then, first of all, to uh, to Donald Trump. Well, well, bye, everybody. It's been good to, to speak to you. And do remember the crucial thing, this is fake news. Bye. <laughs> That's uh, Donald Trump there. Goodbye to Theresa May. Goodbye, Matt. And I am still strong and stable. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, goodbye to uh, Boris Johnson. Uh, no, you, you're not getting rid of me quite yet. You know, I'm I'm hanging on there, hanging in. <laughs> very good. Goodbye to Tony Blair. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you, but it's not goodbye from me either, because one day I'll be back. <laughs> a terrified prospect. And finally, goodbye to Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you very much, and your support is much appreciated. Yeah, you're clearly not familiar with my back catalogue, uh, Jeremy. Uh, very good, to, very good to speak to you all. Uh, that was uh, Andy Cronk as Boris Johnson, Guy Rose as Donald Trump, Graham Dougal as Jeremy Corbyn, Anne Gray as Theresa May, and John Bolly as uh, Tony Blair. Thank you so much for sharing the slightly peculiar world of political lookalikes here on Times Radio. Really good to speak to you all. We'll have to go back to talking about the real ones now, which will be slightly less fun. Uh, a bit of Friday fun here on Times Radio. Right, coming up, we'll do some of your stories about things you've tried to... This is a weird show on a Friday. Things you've tried to flush down a toilet after the story that Donald Trump had blocked the toilets of uh, the White House trying to flush away secret papers. Uh, 